good morning to all of you uh, i am sundar kar i am the oldest faculty member of the department i am 29 years here uh well before we start let me tell you this course nelong is a course which will actually never leave you in your whole career in case you remain engineer irrespective of what engineering branch you take so please pay attention to analog because as the word suggests it is continuous in time and anything which is continuous in time must be important okay otherwise you know world will collapse therefore anything which is continuous is analog and therefore it's very important before we start uh, there are few things you should know my name as i said already in sandurkar six credit course uh what it entire uh, what is this trying to do something that will try to see some of the analog circuits being implemented on bipolar as well as cmos uh it's very interesting to say that analog design appears to be much less systematic yeah it is much less systematic whether some of those basic concepts which make it unsystematic are clear to you some of the books which i'll follow the first one uh, you can see my name sitting there now third author actually i am not the author for this book so it's happened that this sedra smith asked me to revise asia and other countries other than us it seems so i added 150 pages to their earlier one 1000 pages and that's why i my i am the third author in that book so since i am now part of the game i use it as the textbook for me however if you have a book of milman and grabel old book by the way this milman person doesn't exist huh? this is like in my time i think your father or their father maybe you know knowing the name call thareja you know used to have electrical engineering by thareja anything related to electrical electronics maybe civil also he will write a book dl tareja so we are wondering how one person can have such a width so it apparently found that tareja's book came, book became popular so every other book from the same publishing house was written in the name of tareja so that it sells most uh, well known analog circuit person in the world he is dean of university and uh, of course his book is unsystematic to learn but very interesting those who are really looking for very very strong physics circuits i think grace book is the best and the fourth book uh, which i like normally uh, which is written by neeman well you maybe have read his other book on devices the same author has written another book on electronic circuits and design okay this is the syllabus which our site also gives i don't have to talk too much about this uh something they are talking about operational amplifiers frequency responsive amplifiers this word which is bode plot bode is a very famous feedback control system person and uh, in 1948 he wrote the first book on feedback control and he actually described frequency responses and uh, for good reason whenever i taught analog circuit i also liked the frequency response part little more than others because connected to stability of the system and therefore uh, of course you don't say it, but uh, 90s i was called mr bode probably because of my fancy for this bode's plots uh, we will look into some applications of fans like comparators clippers and we'll also see some oscillators real operation amplifier problems in amplifiers uh normally the old books have only bipolar transistors as their basic element but since world has changed to mos we will switch more on the mos maybe 30 to 40% bipolar 60% plus mos so that you know what's going on in the world now uh, so probably we will though it's not specifically written here but i may actually switch more on mos tra uh, transistors and i am told you have already been taught that officially at least okay 
whether you understood, you liked it, you don't know, that's yours. But I am told you know it. Okay. And then in the end, we'll see some more applications like A to D converters, D to A converters, sample holds, and multiplexers time permitting. Uh, okay. So this is something about the course. Today, what I'm going to show you some slides, uh, which is just to tell you what's going on in the world. Okay. So something I will talk today about why analog, what are the analog issues, why CMOS, uh, we will just compare analog design with bipolar and CMOS and some systems. Please do not feel that is, uh, this is irrelevant or something. Whatever I teach in the class throughout my semester, everything can be asked in the examinations including today's talk. So I will just give you some what is VLSI, uh, what are the technologies, what are the market needs, why analog designs are very important and what are the challenges. Uh, word VLSI has come from very large scale integrated circuits uh, since 60s when the semiconductor chips have started coming in the market, particularly from Bell Labs and then from Texas Instrument. We started counting number of transistor per chip. So we say okay 100 small scale, 1000 maybe uh, medium scale, 10,000 and above large scale and maybe millions very large scale. So that is the number we are talking. This has happened because the dimensions of the transistor started shrinking from say 10, 100 micron down to say nowadays 28 nanometers. So obviously if your dimension reduces the number of transistors on the same area will increase. It is not so, the chip size itself has increased. Initially I had a chip which I made in 70s was 1.5 mm by 1.5 mm. Today one can have 1.5 centimeter to 2 centimeters a side. So huge chips, for example Intel, the recent De Leon uh, has around 940 million transistors. It has a 4 processor, quad processor on chip and uh, it has a memory of 16k SRAM which is called cache and just outside another chip they are kept in the same package which is 4 GB DRAM. You can imagine what kind of densities we are talking. But good thing about all this, this is only for digital. Analog people still talk about 1000 transistors, oh big circuit, so huge circuit. Normally I prefer to have 10 transistor to 20 transistor, 50 transistor, use analog block. The problem came because we have a technology earlier was bipolar transistors and it is very ideal for analog performance. In fact, if you really want analog chip to work better, you actually go for bipolar. Two reasons we did not do that or some companies still market. For example, some of the nationals OPAM 741 is still on bipolar, okay, not all of them but some of them. The reason why bipolar loss because of its density limitations that because the size could not be reduced too much and used to consume huge power. And because of that slowly bipolar gave way to MOS technology and present day 99% or 95, 98% chips are on MOS. However, there is no system as far as nature is concerned which will not require analog. So a new concept appeared which is called mixed signal, analog plus digital. Analog may be 10 percent or 15 percent or even 5 percent, the rest will be digital. Now the issue came that if you have a digital technology, then I will prefer smaller dimensions because then it will be faster I know. So I will go for 22 nanometers, maybe 16 nanometer process. But analog says if it is a 1 micron, I am very happy, larger it better for me. Now that means you are trying to put an analog design on a digital technology which is worse for it and now you expect that it should behave far superior. It is something asking too much, the paradox there. Analog designers left to themselves, they say okay put one micron lens, channel lens, it is great. Whereas digital will say put 10 nanometers if you can, 11 nanometers if you can. 
So, there is a problem and therefore, the design and integrated circuit for analog plus digital has become very, very crucial because of bad technology circuit tricks. So, that it actually does lot of good things even with the digital around and that is where the challenge is there. Therefore, there was issues whether we should work on bipolar or CMOS and then in between someone said why not work together by CMOS. Yeah, there are many good things about bipolar CMOS process. One of the thing it takes some advantage of bipolar and some of MOS. But when I say some, there must be lot many disadvantages of both also must be coming. So, you have to weigh whether this is important or that is important and then go for by CMOS. Only six companies in the world have biosimos technology, no one else. So, what is the market is asking? Most of the market is saying wireless. Almost every one of you, I do not so if one of you do not have a mobile, he should raise his hand. I do not think anyone will say I do not have a mobile because that is the only pastime you have these days, constantly putting here. So, wireless systems have become so very important this is the market need. So, all whole challenge nowadays is to work for wireless system, major money is coming from wireless market. Then there is a another system which is coming called optical system particularly fiber communication passing a good data from say hundreds and thousands of miles, wireless does not work as good. So, you want a cable, so a fiber was invented many years ago and now we are looking for optical system. The analog part came like this, if you have an optical system obviously you are converting some data into through a photodiode into optics. You have LED and photodiodes, so you will convert one to the other from optical light to the electrical and electrical to the light okay. and now these conversions have more problems. So, the fiber will do faithful transmission, but what about the ends? So, the major research right now which has much of analog components here rather optical analog components, uh, Fresnel's laws for example are we looked into now. The other area where analog circuits are very strong are sensors, you cannot survive without sensors and we will show some of them. For the digital side you are looking for a microprocessors which is around see your desktop if it runs around 1 gigahertz and a DRAM of 256 MB and you are playing a video game, oh, you have to wait, now what is happening because neither there is enough memory nor there is a speed of the processor. So, for this particularly game market all over the world including Sony PlayStation or Microsoft Play whatever it is, there is a huge research in microprocessor speeds. So, you can see bad things also lead to something good and that is how we are looking for now around 6 gigahertz uh, kind of processors. Normal Pentium 5, Pentium which you use or at least IIT has 2.1 to 3.2 gigahertz and now we are looking for 6 gigahertz someday. Maybe ultimate aim is what we call as KU band 16 gigahertz but we do not know whether we get there. I should not say we, I do not know because I may not survive to see that. Okay. The another area of interest in market right now is memories. Just now I said you want memories, 4 GB diya, to bole 16 nahi hai kya, 16 diya, 256 nahi hai kya, to there is no end in requirement of memories and uh, that is the and they you want very fast access. So, there are a lot of research going on in the area of memories. And the most important area particularly IO input output blocks which should be of low noise, low power and very sensitive okay. and these are the active areas of research. The word custom means in VLSI there are two kinds of designs we do, one is called semi custom, the other is called custom, custom essentially relate to customer. So, customer says I want the specs and you meet them, so obviously you have satisfied a customer is paying for it now, good money. But that means every spec he says you have to meet, which is very difficult because there is always what we call trade offs, if you do this something else will be lost and to avoid that we are trying to get the best out of it. 
so it takes huge effort huge amount of design time hundreds of man years to design a good custom chip so what we do okay we pre design some blocks and reuse it again again it's called semi custom so essentially analog designs individual design has to be designed every time and therefore it is called custom and as i said custom designs are costly so it takes a hell of a year of effort is that clear the major challenge in either digital or analog is power and speed speed in our case of analog we call bandwidth kitne gigahertz kitne megahertz ka bandwidth larger data can flow on a same line if you have larger bandwidths so these are the challenges now question arises why analog some digital system design by the way uh, I have no fancy for digital or analog. I teach all sorts of courses. In last 29 years, I taught. Last semester, I was teaching a VLSR design course to postgraduate post students. Before that, I was teaching technology to postgraduate. Before that, I was teaching digital system to second years. So I have no fancy for digital. But when I sit on the this side, I always abuse the other ones as if oh, I am now this side. So this so-called digital designer suddenly said. Oh, dead. 1980, he said dead. But in the last 10 years, I find most of the research and most of the money has been now dedicated to analog, partly because of the wireless, partly because of the sensor areas. Some answers very simple. Nature doesn't like digital. You are not suddenly see. Yes, there was no tree today. Some full grown tree. It takes. Years, ages before tree grows. Nothing happens in nature which is instant. That is why when I, of course, I worked in Tata Institute earlier. So I used to say Jayan Narayan must be right because he is suggesting steady state evolutions. Because nature is normally prefers to go a steady, steady way. But the big bosses are always saying big bang, like a digit, tap, one or zero. God knows. So, what is important is nature being analog. Even if you want to take that signal from the nature, which is analog, and you want to process faster, better, whatever you call digital people say, I'll need initial input outputs as analog. So, I cannot avoid analog because nature is analog. What I'll do? Okay, I'll take that analog. Signal, convert it into digital, and maybe do all digital processing. At the end, I want to display something. I'll convert from digital to analog and re replace it back in. But I'll still require A to D and B to A converters. Most of the DSPs, uh, digital signal processors, do this. Here is the problem: if I have an ADC, as I, I have a say analog signal, the world. Analog essentially is time varying, cons constantly time varying signals are called analog. So this is analog signal. I'll convert it to digital table just to show you digital data, and then I'll do DS digital processing. The problem with this, though it is shown as the same magnitudes, in real life the analog signal from sensor to meter is extremely weak. First amplified, okay. First amplified. Then, I, as soon as I amplify, it will get some other frequency company. So I have to remove all those other than the signal I want. So I may need a filter, and then maybe I'll further go to ADC and process digitally. And at the end, if I want output analog, I'll convert it from DSP to D to A. So you can see that these two parts. Even in otherwise digital system will be required because otherwise I cannot process. There is a lossy cable like a copper cable or any other cable. You send an input data, and this is the data you are actually sending because it's not a lossless line. The actual data which is being sent is this. You can see it has a time period may be similar, but its shape is how does it look like analog? It does look like an analog signal. So you sent a digital data, 
but the data received in the output was more like an analog. Particularly this will be dominant if the frequency is very high okay if you are looking at 4 gigahertz above or 1 gigahertz above it is more likely that the digital data will be smeared to become analog. So even if I am fully digital person now I will have to worry about that the data which I am seeing being analog how do I process it so that it I still I remain in digital domain that is another problem which analog people are now coming to the help of digital. The way we do it we convert it by some reason 4 levels of digital data. So a new technique so far in digital how many levels we were looking last semester or 2, 1, 0 upper level lower level. Now there is a trend going on in a very high frequency domain to look for 4 level data okay. and if so you will require 4 kinds of sensors now because it should detect 4 levels. Okay. Not that it has appeared in the market something this is what I say going to happen now that people may look for multi level digital data. To because that analog part then can be broken into more levels instead of two only okay. So the newer research is now converting this so called analog looking signal into a four level or even multi level people are looking right now four is what is being attempted into a digital so why analog probably I am trying to answer why analog okay. Most of the disk which you use hard disk without hard disk you cannot survive. 4 GB, 8 GB, 160 GB, 320 GB, kitna bhi do kam hai. This is your data you are storing on the disk and what you really take it out is this if the GB speeds are higher these days because you are making very high speed hard disk now and data acquisition actually smears it and the variation can be as high as 2 millivolt to some levels. Now again you will have to retrieve digital data out of this, this is called recovery. So another analog circuit will be required to recover from this a digital data. So again there will be analog components. In wireless you send a data at a particular frequency for example GSM sends a data at 890 megahertz this is your mobile communication signal. However whenever you see something like passing a signal there are two close by components which are called interferers okay. Now they are very close to the original frequency and at times their amplitude may be larger okay. because of the non-linearity in the system you may get additional components which we will call later some way harmonic but these are not actual harmonic noise you may say and they may have larger. So one of the major worry right now either you boost this enough so that the interference signal is much smaller than the signal itself or shift this far away okay. Both techniques have been tried in the wireless communication and both require lot of analog processing. Just now I said optical this is what optical receivers are you have a transmitter you have a laser diode to convert digital data or analog data into light you pass through fiber you have a photodiode which receives optical light converts into electrical and processing um, much of the processing here will be analog in the case. The another area of interest as I say sensors as I said you want to measure temperature, you want to measure humidity, you want to measure all kinds of natural nature parameters. I will show you some other kinds of them soon. The, the best sensors these days available are made out of another silicon technology which is called MEMS, micro uh, electromechanical systems okay, MEMS and the most sensors which are now made available which are very small. Uh, I do not know whether these days in my time you know uh, we have a mechanical courses compulsory whether you do electronics or you do anything. So we have we have a applied mechanics course, we have a workshop, we have many other things also did even the uh, surveying which I do not see anyone of even civil people do these days. I am not showing anyone theodolite and the chain and everything maybe it is there I have not seen. So in the one of the 
famous gauge which mechanical people is called strain gauge okay. and that is a huge bulky dynamometer they call of course they measure lot of great, great large values of force as well as accelerations but they are very bulky. Nowadays sensors have very gyroscopes for example another big sensors okay, vibrational speeds. Okay. So now we are looking for silicon sensors okay, and one of this method is to use capacitances as their measurements because in the silicon I can make a cantilever which can under stress by acceleration or by force will vibrate or move down. The variation in this is proportional to the bending moment it got which is proportional to the sense which it was doing and the change here can be monitored as a capacitance. If I have two plates here if it comes closer capacitance is larger if it goes away capacitance. The change in capacitance is the measure of the force of the accelerometer. Okay. This is one more area which requires lot of analog digital processing which is MEMS. Another applications which are very very important uh, as I see is biomedical. Okay. I will not do all of them but just to read for you. There is a many surgical operations. There is an issue because you have you will give an incision and lot of blood will ooze okay. and if blood is lost too much patient will die because of loss of blood okay. though they keep feeding blood. So there is some medicines that give hyperion as they call and uh, it clot, clots it. Okay. But if it gives too much then they give clots in the veins itself. So blood flow will stop. Okay. So patient should not die is our major criteria. So we must keep monitoring is the clotting level going on. So this is essentially blood, blood clot control which in most of the heart surgery is very important because patient may die before you think. Therefore in such application I show you analog processing is very important. Most of the is calling surgeries you can put right now even there is a surge going on for pancreas solutions. Of course heart because everything is right now is replaceable all kinds are put everywhere tantalum sheets are put here. So during this implant surgery a uh, lot much of control is required which is continuous control and you need lot of analog processing. All your ECGs, EEGs, EMGs, ERGs uh, take and then, uh, brains any kinds of this body mapping all requires analog processors. Then there is a biochemical spectrograms it takes place it does not suddenly happen, it keeps changing its pH values. Okay. So, you want to know, you want to see what is changing. So, a spectrogram is seen. So, during patient is monitored when the drug is actually injected. In. So, such and this process is very slow. So, you need a small signal which is appearing in electrical, has to be amplified, noiseless, because otherwise, if there is a noise in that, you will get something wrong. You say pH is 7.5 and it may be 2 only. So there is an issue there how to make a correct measurement of this. Another circuit which IIT Bombay has made or other product we made, of course I am not a party to that, Professor Sharma and my earlier colleague Professor Rakesh Lal and even the Madam Shuja I am told. Uh, these days there is a worry even of course uh, I hope you are too young and I only pray touch wood none of you will get your heart problems in your whole life. But it has been now found because of so called money making business of young students, young managers, they actually are getting heart problems at lower age than 40, which is unfortunate. Now, how do we know that the patient is actually having some problems? So, we created a small kind of two probe meter, as you say, which is small locket, which is put in bore like a then it monitors what changes from the last ECG has. If it is different than certain numbers, it actually has a RF transmitter receiver circuit. It will to the, the patient is running on the track in the morning jogging and he is feeling problem now. Hence that it is happening to younger kids now. Okay. 
another problem which analog people are buying is neurons your brain essentially works on the basis of neuron signals okay. and as i again said all neuron processing is essentially like an analog i'll show you some other time a neural network which actually replicates a neuron behavior is like a opam character okay so you can actually think that a opam can replace your is equivalent say more okay so that's very important that neuron theory tested on the hardboard using opams another area i just search you know anything you monitor inside the body is called lab inside your body lab chip as they call it will keep monitoring everything for you that a week that is brought and sense so you need a good eye for that at the end of the day whatever signal i get i must reduce uh, it's a very small signal i must amplify it i must filter it i'll see to it the it's a replica of the original signal as good as possible that's called signal conditioning so these are the blocks uh, these are the areas where analog is used yes i'll read quickly okay i have already said the person who does this machine is called perfusionist whose role include monitoring appropriate parameters to ensure that the patient is effectively treated with anticoagulant to avoid blood clots okay and for at least 60 minutes this is being monitored so okay this is more to tell you what kind of things happen there is a thrombin and fibrogen in two such parameters we keep monitoring see what is the but basically what electrical people monitor it actually changes the impedance when it changes this so all that we do is to monitor the blood impedance and that monitoring will know whether what is the clotting level right now is going on okay and then we can control it that hyper on how much to inject or not inject through this feedback system uh, okay so here is an impedance measurement system which is based on analog device chip called 5933 you can see from here there are certain digital part there are certain analog part this is your oscillator then there is of course uh, multiplexer then there is an interface then there are digital block like registers uh, dfts but they can see there is a adc there is a filter there is a gain amplifier okay and you can see signals are analog and we are monitoring the impedance the blood clot how it is done is this is how it is done you your blood clots are kept here then it reacts and then it keeps finding the impedance at the end this is done in mems now the chip is outside this is a mem structure okay and the whole processing is analog plus digital because something you have to control by digital okay so you can see that only giving you one example why analog cannot be ruled out that oh everything is digital why analog so yeah there is a requirement where analog cannot be removed uh okay i just said all that uh, okay another thing which people say digital data transmission on a long distance leads to distraction that is noise contents has nl kind of transceivers will be needed now question arises why we are not doing trans, uh, analog transceivers this was known to us many years ago 60s we knew analog better than digital so why we not continued with analog why we major worry came that analog signal actually die down as they move to at the on the line because of loss it has so you need a repeater if you see optical fiber every mile there is a repeater so if you do same thing with analog uh, yeah it can be done but then again you have to improve it by its low noise performance filter it out cost involved it's not that it cannot be done it's just the cost involved and the power supply everywhere you have to so because of the cost involved in this analog receivers have lost transistors lost to digital because digital signal can go far distance compared to analog and will require a uh, repeater after maybe 20 miles or 50 miles or 100 miles that is where or distance why are we we have a cable why not use transceivers which are far superior in performance so at least locally we may come back now for its own fidelity or best performance sensitivity we may come back to trans analog transceiver systems okay for example a normal hard disk 
uh, the is a very little big signal it's that and the very high speed disk has come so you need now something to amplify that uh, similarly for wireless you know the antenna even for normal digital data the antenna signal which you receive is depend on from how far you are away from the tower okay of course towers are not good for your health that's what everyone is now saying but i always say body is immune to everything after some time so probably this so called uh, our radiation will finally become immune to that hopefully so okay maybe one generation. People ask me other day that you stay in Bombay, uh, so much radiation from the DRC and Sarapur. And I say I think our health is better now because of radiation. It's curing something, hopefully. Okay, that's the way we should look. Okay, I already said microprocessor memory with ultra high speed use clock signals across the major worry. A chip is two centimeter. I just said now. What is the length of interconnect? on intel chip anyone guess what is the length of interconnect means a line taking signal from one point to the other what is the length it actually transfers through on a chip typically maximum lengths available on the chip how much any one of you guess nanometers typically intel processor has 1 km length of interconnect on chip okay and that's something you must understand that we always think wire blue glow but here on the chip itself i have 1 km now if that is so the signal will not have integrity going from one point to the other that's our major it's a loss of loss of clock so the clock which is running from one end to the other actually drifts away okay so let's say what is drift away means at t is equal to 0 let's say one has to come at some point it will t 1 0 plus point something it will come because it's get delayed by them okay. this is called jitter okay. and jitter is the major worry for digital data processing forget about it anyway. then the recovery of this can be done through what is called as phase lock loops which is analog lock okay that is why for clock recovery you will require an analog circuit because you are running a very high speed signals on a large lengths of interconnects okay this is like a transmission line okay. so all this memories have something what we call sense amplifier what is sense amplifier can be let's say memory you have read let's say you are storing 1 as 1 volt okay if the line which is coming out where you call sense i know the cell has 1 it takes long time because this wire is long enough so it has a large capacitance so it takes enough time before 1 volt it reaches i don't want to know whether it is fully one or not i have already precharged this line with say 0.8 or 0.6 okay as soon as this crosses this charging process crosses 0.6 i'll compare if it is larger than 0.6 i say one i'll not wait for it to go for one this is called sense amplifier sense amplifier is a comparator which is a analog block so even in the so called hard memories the major research access time research is only on analog component and not so much on the cell is that clear to you why analog okay in the case of digital uh, the circuit deal primarily uh, with speed and power i want a 4 gigahertz 5 gigahertz data flow and i want preferably zero watt power consumption preferably i mean i want zero watt of course i know power cannot be zero so as low as possible microwatts milliwatts but certainly not watts typical chip consumes 40 to 100 watts of power okay A microprocessor chip consumes around 40 to 100 watts of power i want to reduce this so the whole research right now we are looking is how to reduce the power but there is a trade off as soon as i reduce the power what do i reduce essentially the current if i reduce the current power will go down b into i okay but if i reduce the current that 
time taken for the capacitor to charge with the lower current will be larger t dv by dt is smaller so t takes longer okay speed gain so there is a trade off so now game is i want high speed but i don't want to give you power okay. that's the reason thermodynamically it should not be possible if you don't give me this i'll not give the other so how to fool thermodynamics is all over tricks okay if you learn my digital course some day i'll tell you how i am fooling circuits i'm fooling others beating as if thermodynamics is avoided no it cannot be somewhere else i'm doing something tricks as far as you are concerned i had done it okay i improved the speed i reduced the power where did i spend i'm not telling okay somewhere i must have done some tricks i must have done but as far as you are concerned hey high speed low power that's where the research is about in analog these are not the two parameters we are worried this is unfortunate we worry about speed power gain precision power supply variation in that and many others but at least five six of them uh you need large bandwidth which is called speed you need very precise because why precise because analog is time varying signal any change there will be seen at the output okay so precision means 1.6 millivolt means 1.6 millivolt 1.7 kya to udhar bhi 10 times bahar aa gaya so i am worried that what i say i have must get that okay. so precision is very important in analog not so much in digital why i say so because there is a noise margin one can be recognized from vdd by 2 to vdd and zero can be recognized from zero to vdd by 2 anywhere is fine here anywhere means nowhere okay and that is why analog needs extreme precision okay of course there also will beat the system don't worry everywhere like all iitians brightest among them they feel so i don't know whether they are hopefully they are uh you beat the iit system okay. not that you do good or bad you see to it that whatever we come out with how to beat it okay 29 years my experience okay. and we have lost so i have full faith in you as well whatever way i will try to see you shouldn't do it you will do it some way or the other okay that's the iit so okay uh worry as i say they are very sensitive to noise what is crosstalk today unfortunately for me there is no crosstalk maybe this is your first lecture you are worried about me good keep worrying anything you talk there if it interferes on me or my talk it's called crosstalk so two lines are going one data on this one data this may interfere the next line close by because of coupling due to mutual coupling particularly inductance mutual inductance this is called cross talk particularly worst if one data is going in this direction the other is coming in this direction the cross talk is highest both amplitude opposite so maximum separation okay so that's major worry in uh, this interferers cross talks sensitivity to noise all these worries have to be satisfied when you design analog that's why analog designs per se people say are difficult other worry of analog is even worse many times analog circuit books are called linear circuits what do you you understand by word linear why they were called linear circuit guess linear okay word in maths is y is equal to mx is a linear system if i change x to 2x y will also get doubled if m remaining constant okay linear systems is that clear why therefore similarly analog circuits were earlier called linear circuits because output voltage was proportional to input voltage again remaining constant v0 by vn is constant straight line okay so it's called linear system but our assumption is that the device property is always like this that's why it translate input to output proportionally but in real life you have learned bipolar devices you have learned mass transistors aisa aisa hai idhar bhi aisa nahi hai so there is no real real linearity in the mass or bipolar characteristics so there are regions where 
output current and input voltage they are not linear or input current to input uh, output current to input current not linearly connected if they are not linearly related then there is a second order non linearity appeared so to say y is equal to a0 x plus a1 x square no no linearity now this x square term will create let's say sin omega t was the signal x square will create what terms sin square omega t which in terms of 2 1 minus 2 sin square omega t sin 2 omega t that means you now you have omega t terms and 2 omega t terms also appearing is that a harmonic has appeared okay. so part of the power has lost to second harmonic is that clear so in the case of analog you have a very small range which is linear as soon as you increase the amplitude even a little more you are in a non linear range and part of the power is anyway lost to the second or third or higher harmonics okay. so you are to be always worried in a you should remain within so called that linear range okay otherwise you will immediately get into second order device problems okay these are very important effects we will see how to minimize them but not every time we can reduce to a zero level because of this so called smaller range so many effects it wants to do it is very difficult for do automation like digital in digital there are all kinds of software available so much so nowadays there is something called silicon compilers i give a statement i want to do this this under this condition it should show me this and a chip can be designed without your intervention okay all simulation can do that okay it will actually find out what you want okay and it will finally give a design for the chip this is full automation of course not the ideal we still interfere interfere everywhere so that we remain in charge if everything is done by computer what will do so we keep saying no no human intervention is essential okay but otherwise there is a possibility that automation is great in digital hardware okay or digital simulation there is nothing so called fully automated analog designs or analog systems you ought to design every time because it's very problemistic every small problem has to be individually handled and fixed that's why analog is interesting maybe difficult and much of this uh, you know what is the way people do it not essentially always by reasoning mostly by intuition and experience last time ऐसा होगा इस बार भी कर देते फिर देखेंगे तो थोड़ा सा तुक्का भी चल सकता है इकोनॉमिक फोर्सेस रिक्वायर डेवलपमेंट ऑन आर सर्किट इन मेन स्ट्रीम डिजिटल प्रोसेस दैट्स व्हाट आई सेड एंड दैट इज क्रिएटिंग मेजर प्रॉब्लम बिकॉज़ टेक्नोलॉजी ऑफ डिजिटल पर्टिकुलरली एट 45 नैनोमीटर डाउन इज वर्स फॉर एनालॉग डिजाइंस बट वी हैव टू वर्क विद देम सो वी हैव टू इंटीग्रेट एनालॉग डिजिटल on a digital process rather than on a analog process which would have been ideal because if i want op amp only why should i put everything else i want only this i'll give very good to you but i cannot because they'll say no this has to sit with microprocessor this has something else you put your block here then what there is a issue so there is a difficulties in analog designs therefore it's a challenge so what is my answer to you is analog design therefore more difficult than digital design my experience of 29 years says yes because digital design has a large noise margin okay you can have three three way trade offs only power speed and maybe area whereas analog needs multi dimensional trade offs power frequency gain precision power supply and many more okay okay we are already done sorry there are two possible technologies which analog circuits can be implemented using bipolar current transport via bipolar transistors or field effect based current transport which is mos transistors bipolar circuits have edge over mos circuits as far as performance is concerned or gain is concerned but has a drawback of large power dissipations whereas mos technology for analog though not the best possible compared to bipolar but much more suitable for digital applications. CMOS is the best bet for digital and hence analog too should get implemented on CMOS not that it is better but that's the necessity okay. 
as I just now said, mostly the chips will be mixed signal, both analog and digital together. Like a neural say, and I will show you some figures. Okay. This is a mixed signal neural processor. Okay. This is your digital signal, neural digital signal processing. This is D to A converter. This is analog neural network processing, uh, neural processing. This is A to D converter and things like that. This is a processor was designed way back in 1994 or something, uh, which still works. Okay. We are trying to replicate brain functions now. We are trying to see how brain works. So tomorrow, if you have an accident or some reasons you have a damage to your brain, can I put a chip to supplement that part? This is what we are looking for. Is that clear to you? Why? Why this research? Because there is a worry. There is a too much traumatic situation these days because the cars are too many, speeds are too many, two wheelers, if you are driving, please take care of old person like me, crossing a road at the main gate, I always pray God every second, because I do not know whether I will cross finally, then this motorbike person will not throw me, okay. he does not see signal, he does not see people, I do not know, he only sees speed, okay. so I hope some of you have bikes, we have banned them, told, but I uh, still see hundreds of them. So in case you are driving, please take care of old people like us who still may want to survive at least two more years. So this is something what we are right now looking for. Uh, okay, this is challenging. Quickly, I'll show you introduction to analog circuit. You can see here, this is a nonlinear system and this is a linear system. Can you tell me why? Vn is ground or Vdd is 1, V out is either 1 or 0. The reason is uh, since both are transistors and both are nonlinear components. Okay. So V0, Vn, when you go from Vn from 0 to 1, both transistor will not remain in the same operating mode. That means one may be in linear, other may be in saturation, other may be linear, the other, both may be saturation, both may be linear. Since the characteristics in all three two zones are different, there will be a lot of non-linearity in V0, Vn characteristics called the transfer. We already done transfer characteristics. So that is a non-linear device. But in the case of analog circuit, we only operate this is the transfer characteristics of an inverter which you just now see CMOS inverter, you can see from here to here V0, Vn is non-linear because here one is in P is in saturation, non-saturation, other is in saturation, both saturation, other opposite happens here. In the case of digital, signal goes from 0 to say VDD, input goes from 0 to VDD. Analog actually works only on this zone where relatively V0, Vn is linear. So you can see the available input range to me is how much? Few millivolts. Do you get the point? Because during this few millivolts only V0, Vn has relatively linearity, nowhere else, okay. So what does that mean? The input signal in analog has to be small signal because otherwise it will not remain in linear zones. And that is why if you operate your in bias your circuit only in this range, let us say this is my biasing voltage, then I can apply an input signal over it which still keeps output such that V0 Vn is in linear mode, okay. That is where the analog differs from digital. Digital I go from here to here. Analog I remain only here, okay. And therefore, you can see linear circuits will have always limitation of small signals. It cannot have because you can see if I have this large signals, which you are in non-linear areas. Is that clear to you? Therefore, analog circuits normally will have very small signals limitations. Because of course, you can go out, then what will happen? the power will go into other harmonics more than maybe fundamental with the frequency you are 2 omega t, 3 omega t, 4, 4 omega 5. More than nonlinearity, x square x cube x4, more 
third, fourth, fifth harmonic will start appearing. Plus another may appear omega 1 minus omega 2, omega 1 plus omega 2 will also start appearing, which may be worse interference. Okay. And therefore, analog people should normally try to operate themselves in the linear mode, and therefore, signals are always limited. Is that point clear to you? That is why I say this is so you can see if you operate in this, then you can remain as an amplifier. And then you can say you are in linear circuits. Uh, just to compare again, uh, digitals are highly non-linear, but very high noise immunity. I just said VDD by 2 VDD 1, 0 to VDD by 2 is 0, huge noise immunity. Immune to power supply variation. If five, if 1 volt supply become 800 millivolts or 950 millivolts, who cares that within noise margin whatever happens, let it happen. Okay, I am clear and it only carries at a time only 1 bit of information 1 or 0. Compare it with linear uh, analog circuits it's highly linear extremely sensitive to noise okay, you can just see if that signal has some more noise it will transform immediately at the output. Any variation in power supply means bias point will vary means one side may become non-linear one side may become linear. So very sensitive to power supply value okay. and carries n bits of information in the sense the analog. So it is an n bits of information is going in one go okay. that is why it is very good essentially. Okay. One more figure will come here is the advantage of digital uh, you can see uh, it is not very clearly visible but maybe I will read from here this is an input I have put and this center line is threshold. So anything above is 1, anything below. You can see there is a small variation is occurring below, okay. But it does not matter to me, it is less than we threshold, na, still recognize as 0. But if that happens in this, now you can see from here, this will be visible to you. As soon as it goes, it also jumps. So anything in digital is acceptable whereas in analog uh, it is not acceptable okay. So this is your VDT variation. So you can see VDT variation will also appear at the signal outputs. You can see this is my VDT variation. This is over reading that because that will change the bias point. So it will also show you the different gains, different outputs. So worry in analog is so called noise over reading every time if you do not take enough care. In digital, a damn care. Okay. okay, irradiation some other day. I do not know whether it is visible to you. I, okay, maybe just tell you there are three ways amplifier generic will show you this later. Three possible way of mass realization of amplifiers. Okay, so what we have to consider in analog is handling of positive and negative signals. In digital, we are only 0 to 1, is that correct? 0 volt to 1 volt, 2 volt, 5 volt, whatever supply. In analog, minus B hai or plus B hai. So dual rail hai, minus VDD plus VDD. So two power supply ja okay. Signal minus may bhi aata hai, plus may bhi aata hai. Sinusoid hai, square hai. So you need dual rail disk. I just now told you in the figure where do I bias is very important because that will decide my noise. I mean uh, noise immunity, non-linearity ki kahan hai. So I must bias it correctly. So biasing is most important aspect in analog design because that may decide my all of the power delivered to the outputs. Linearity is essential because otherwise I am what is I was avoiding I will immediately get you I will lose power in harmonics. So I, I need linearity. I want noise tolerance, sorry the word is slightly made a mistake. I want lower noise not tolerance, it essentially means it can tolerate larger noise. I mean I, it should not, it should tolerate larger noise but it does not happen. So you must, it will have a very low noise tolerance in normal system. Therefore you must design for it that it at least tolerate this much noise. Nothing should drift too much, power supply should not be 1 volt and suddenly 0.8 volt everything will have okay. it is called drifts. 
the problem with design is in case of digital as I said we can have pre-designed pre-tested blocks. I have a multiplier, I have a multiplexer, I have an adder, I can once design for a given technology, store it and whenever in a larger circuit I will just replicate that. Nothing happens in analog that there is no standard sales. Every block you design every time, okay. And uh, difficulty in designing low voltage, low power because larger the currents, larger is the charging of capacitors as that faster. So, bandwidth badhane ke liye current hona bahut jaruri hai, power phir bada gaya. So, that is our major goal to make it low power. Four, four important parameters we have been looked into designs. One is called transconductance. What is transconductance by definition? Transconductance, GM, output current divided by inputs voltage or change in output current to the change in input voltage delta I by delta V is GM. So, one of the major parameter of design of, of analog circuit is the GM, kitna GM and you will see later GM is proportional to I, root I or thumb I current. So, if you want a gain which is gm into r, you need larger gm. So, what does that mean? Larger gm will come from where? Larger currents, larger power. So, gain at the cost of power, no other way. We will see alternate way then. We also want to control output resistance. Some systems need very low output resistance. Some systems connection needs very large output resistance. Can we vary output resistance of a system? The third parameter of interest to me is called noise which is called input referred noise. Now, this is very interesting word why it is not called output referred noise. So, must be something in it. So, we will worry about input referred noise ok. And fourth but the not it is the most important part other than the gain is the bandwidth. Larger the bandwidth higher frequency performance is greater or better and therefore, larger bandwidths are we will see a very interesting thing will happen. Gain into bandwidth normally is constant. What do I say? Gain into bandwidth is normally quotes is constant. Now, I will see that can we beat this word normal? Otherwise, what will happen? I increase the bandwidth, I lose the gain, I increase the gain, I lose the bandwidth, ok. So, can I beat this system? I will say I have not lost the bandwidth, but I have boosted gain. If I had done that, I have beat this so called technological constraint. Every technology says this is the maximum gain bandwidth possible, ok. But we will say are technology to technology, hum circuit hai. So, we will do better, show you how do I do it. At what cost we will see, kuch to kuch de nahi padega. I gain something. But I will see that this so called constraint will beat. What is the constraint we said? In into bandwidth is constant, but we will see to it can we do mischief? Say bandwidth. Opposite is not possible. Again, I repeat bandwidth increasing and gain constant is not very easy. But gain increasing without losing bandwidth is possible. Because bandwidth is related to capacitance of the transistor that I cannot touch, ok. So, I will say ok bandwidth jo kuch hai wo hai, but gain to mein bada hi dunga, hmm? ya kuch game kar sakta hai, ok. Ok, maybe uh, there is enough we talk today, we will have some slides later, another half an hour lecture we will continue on this and uh, we will show you that little more design issues what is happening. See you then, have a nice day, take care.